Today I'm continuing the series highlighting my most important influences with a player who has had a bigger impact on electric blues than many people realize, Johnny Guitar Watson. Johnny Guitar Watson is somewhat unusual in that he had two rather distinct careers. Now, in the 50s and 60s, he was pretty much a straight early electric blues and R&B artist. Then in the 70s, he reinvented himself as primarily a funk artist. Now, I love the 70s stuff, and many people are mainly familiar with that material. But his influence on my playing and the blues world at large mostly comes from his work in the 60s. Now, Johnny was one of those guys who primarily played in first position, using a capo. Now, even though most of us who've benefited from listening to him don't play this way, his influence is more pervasive than you might imagine. Once you become familiar with his work, you're likely to start recognizing it, at least some of his style, in a wide variety of modern blues players. And I encourage you to seek out the early recordings, like Three Hours Past Midnight, Too Tired, and many other classics from that era. Now, I never set out to duplicate what he did with any precision, but Johnny Guitar Watson's super cool, biting leads have informed a good deal of what I do. All right, well, I'm just going to assume that the vast majority of you are not going to want a capo up so that you can play exactly like Johnny Guitar Watson. But like most of us, you just want to get a little of the spirit, a little of the attitude, a little of the attack, and a little of the approach into your playing. So I'm going to start off playing an E, just because I can play that first position style without capoing up, just to give you a little idea of how he approached it. Although I don't remember, off the top of my head, I can't remember any songs of his in E, <laughs> so he was always capoed up. <laughs> So you'll notice one thing, that he uses this two, the F sharp in E. And he also did a lot of pull-offs, which would have been pulling off to the open string, as I'm doing. And the third thing you'll notice is that the bends are barely a quarter step. Now this probably is two things. For one thing, he's capoed up, and he's probably using very heavy strings. This is mostly in the early 60s. Although his later style, he didn't do a lot of big bending there either, although he did a little more, I think. There's also the unison slide. Now, you hear this all over Jimmy Vaughn's later playing. Of course, there's this move where he comes up here, and you'll notice that's a very small bend as well. And rather than hitting this note usually, he just lets go and goes back to first position. Okay, so for most playing, I won't be an E. And so when I'm playing in a higher key without the capo and want to get uh, the feeling of that style, I might play like this. So let's hear it in the mix.
Well, I do hope you found this useful or entertaining or hopefully both. <laughs> if you did, give it a like. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you again very soon.